The program is the Afia Morning Show on Afia Television, Channel 254, DSTV, 17, Go TV, and at Afia TV, official on YouTube and Facebook. I've been Amdi Abaya. Natalie Uku is here with me, and now we've been joined by veteran sports analyst, broadcaster, come commentator, mm. come pitch side analyst, okay. <laughs> ball tracker. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah. Good, good morning. to have you here. Yeah, good, good to have myself here. I mean, we we're, were here on Friday. We were together on Friday before the match, and we were analyzing what would happen, um, what kind of formation um, the coach would bring up. And I was correct, not in formation, but in the fact that no matter how hard we tried to be logical, Coach Fesero was going to pick a team out of the hat as randomly as he would roll dice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course he did that. The only thing we were sure of was that Osime will play. That's all we were sure of at the end of the day. And um, I mean, that match ended 1-1, which typically puts us in our usual permutation, calculation, and um, palpitation mode, where we always have to start counting away goals and we're at the mercy of the opposition. Um, 36 minutes, um, Ivan Salvador gave them the lead, and of course, uh, not too long after Victor Simen with that header was able to pull us level. But after that, we fell flat, very, very flat. Now, people have brought different reasons. The midfield was organized, defense was shaky, the attack was not cohesive. What were the main issues that led to us not, you know, being able to handle business with Equatorial Guinea? It's simply discipline. Mm. We saw a super ego side that had every opportunity to win a game, you know, to write off that game yesterday. We saw some couple of misses. Um, the worst being uh, Victor Simon also, who scored the goal, but again... Two misses, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. So, it's, um, I think it's just discipline. Simple. We saw what the Equatorial Guinea team brought. It was a disciplined side, not too flamboyant. They were just there. They knew what they wanted to do. To them, getting a draw against Nigeria was a win. Mm. But Nigeria didn't see it that way. We just felt that, okay, we're going to ride on these guys and we're going to go through. But we saw it. Uh, what was a, 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 a Simon doing in that team? I, if, if I were the coach, I would have taken him out in that particular team because he didn't bring, um, will I say, the quote-unquote the Simon that we, everybody has talked about. Mm. So Chukweze came in, we saw what Chukweze, you know, tried to do, but again, he couldn't gel. So it only showed that we had superstars and names, but again, mm. we didn't have a team. That was just what it is. Mm. The team was not disciplined. If we were as half as disciplined as what the Equatorial Guinea, uh, you know, the way they were, we yeah. would have won that game. Mm. I mean, look at, look at the uh, statistics for the match. Mm. Nigeria had 19 shots to Equatorial Guinea 7. We had seven shots on target. They only had one, which was, of course, mm -hmm. the goal. Um, we had 51% possession, which is very surprising. One would have thought that Nigeria would have had much more possession against Equatorial Guinea. In fact, um, they had more passes than us. We just had better pass accuracy. Because they could, you, you know, you could, you could see them, they, at least they were able to do what? To string two passes together. Mm. But for Nigeria, it was difficult for us to hold the ball and uh, string those passes. What's all what Sanisu did now, to me, was the best man on the field, even though he was injured, because mm. I didn't expect that much from him. But again, he came in. I saw an attacking uh, you know, player, an attacking midfielder, who could take the ball to his opponent. I, mm. I saw a boy who wanted the ball. He wanted to play. But there was no team chemistry. So, mm. majority of the time he had the ball, he was brought down. So there was all this such, and the Equatorial Guinea team knew that if they, had, if they allow him, it will be a problem for them. And I mean, you would expect that Equatorial Guinea would have had more fouls. But we actually had more 13 fouls. fouls to their 11. We had more fouls than Equatorial Guinea. Um, of course, they had more yellow cards. They had two. We had only one yellow card. Uh, pretty, pretty decent game. Um, looking at the stat sheet, uh, no red cards. And uh, for corners, they had one more corner than us. They had three corners. We only had two, which tells you we were not exactly putting their keeper no, we under pressure, despite our seven shots 
or on Saturday, the immediate of comfortable saves, no parrying the ball to the corner, no deflection. And that, that brings about the question, what does Pesero have to do now to bring any sort of cohesion or chemistry? Because we saw Osime making runs. Um, I saw moments where Iwobi took up good positions at the edge of the box, and the ball was held on a bit too long mm -hmm. by the player with the ball, didn't get it to him on time. Um, we saw a very slow, laborious, um, super ego side when bringing the ball out of defense to the point where towards the end we started trying to rely on pace, throwing balls down the channel and actually looking at people's runs. You know, it took 80, 80 plus minutes for us to decide that we're going to put balls into the channels for PC players to run onto and cause problems, which is where we saw a couple of those uh, late misses. But what does Pizarro have to do? To get some chemistry into this, it team. is difficult to start to, uh, you know, to tell you what Pizarro could do because mm. number one, we do not have a team that Pizarro could change the chemistry of the game. This is well, okay. What, uh, what of personnel? Yeah, be, be, because what we have are personnel who probably don't understand themselves. Because if they mm. did, uh, you know, I keep asking myself, if we cannot beat a Pretoria Guinea, who would we beat? Is it Ivory Coast that, that had a 2-0 victory over Guinea-Bissau in their first game and the fact that they are playing at home, they would have the 12th man, and which, of Ooh. course, would be of, of a huge advantage? Is it a Guinea-Bissau uh, Guinea team? Yes, they lost to Ivory Coast, but then again, they played good football. So if you take a look at what should Pissero do, I, I'm, I'm totally confused because I do not want, I, I, I cannot start placing it. First off, we do not have an a Kelechi Hanacho in that team. If probably he was fit as at yesterday, Kelechi Hanacho would have made all the difference. In our midfield, we do not have an NDD. So it is difficult to now say, okay, who holds down the midfield? The young man that just came in, the San Luis boy that we we're talking about, is injured. I don't know how, how long he's going to be out of uh, the competition, whether he's going to even complete the, competitions, uh, the competition, I do not know. So those are begging questions. And then if you take a look the, uh, at the way the Super Eagles or Pissero sets up his, his, his team, it is very difficult to say, this man is going to do this for me. Mm. And the moment Lukman flicked in that cross, Victor Simon used his head, bam, which of course is his um, uh, you know, trademark. But then you look at um, the leadership, the leadership in the team. The leadership in the team will decide what will happen. I guess it is not about Pissero any longer. It is about the players knowing whether and asking themselves, do we want to win well, what, the next game? What is the formation? What is the pattern? What is the strategy going into the match against the opposition? I th thought that, you know, you're playing um, an Equatorial Guinea. Yeah. They are going to come in with an underdog mentality. People don't expect us to win. We're going to fight. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do... Which, that, I, which they did yesterday. Yeah, I, I mean, but if you're in Nigeria, what you want to do as quickly as possible is to break that confidence. You want to get in behind them constantly, have them running at their goalpost. I mean, what they said did towards the end, throwing the ball in the channel. If you do that early in the match, first 15, 20 minutes, have them running towards their goal, you create all sorts of confusion and get people who are nervous. And suddenly, the, uh, the back line is sitting a bit too deeply. There's a bit too much space between the back line and the midfield, and you have space and to play, space. A, a space to exploit. And Nigeria, you know, I, I think they, they, they understood the attitude of African football better than us. Mm. Now, they were, you, you can always find them in the second balls. They weren't losing it. Nigeria was losing the second balls. Yeah. But the Equatorial Guinea side was not lo losing the second balls. What was difficult for them to do was the finishing, and that's probably... Uh, what explains that why they had less shots on target, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, less shots on goal. Uh, but then again, did they do their homework in terms of uh, the midfield? Yes, they did. Mm. But for Nigeria, we did not. Now, I thought that by the time we got that equalizer, because it came at a perfect time. Yes, there's no uh, um, scene that was committed. Uh, by the Super Eagles because they were scored first. Uh, you know, it, it had to take um, you know, courage to come back into the game. And they came back into the game pretty good. They didn't waste time. I thought that as at that point in time that they came back into the game, uh, mm. they were to show a lot of maturity going into the attack, throwing those balls into you know, the midfield of the Equatorial Guinea side. But they didn't do it. Mm. We decided that we were going to play, okay, pass me, I pass you. Mm -hmm. And then we were going to beat 
Uh, it doesn't work. African football has grown beyond what the Super Eagles gave yesterday. Let, yeah. Let's now talk about, well, the first match. Yeah. The host uh, of the AFCON, let's talk about Ivory Coast versus Guinea-Bissau. Guinea -Bissau. What I noticed when I watched the battle is that Guinea-Bissau seems to be playing a little bit of a defensive game. It appeared as if, well, to me, that they were not making an effort to actually score. It appeared that they were defending their post. I did not see enough effort from, you know, Guinea-Bissau. And eventually, down the line, Nigeria is going to play Guinea-Bissau. What are your permutations for that match? Because right now, I see very weak I said something strategy. here before, and I said, if we cannot beat Equatorial Guinea, is it Guinea-Bissau? So, which means... Do you believe Guinea-Bissau plays better than I, Equatorial Guinea? Look at what the well, they are ranked. They are ranked higher. They are ranked, yeah, higher, they are ranked yeah. higher. But again, outside being the f uh, outside the fact that they are ranked higher, what Equatorial Guinea did yesterday, uh, or so, sorry Saturday, was what any other team could have done with a playing against the host in the first game. You don't go up front. You don't uh, uh, um, open up your, your 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 defense for them to come in. But Ivory Coast, but they a attack. very a very experienced side with a lot of um, you know strong attackers that you know they came into the, the the game with you'd expected that they would win let me tell you guinea bissau the way i feel went into that game knowing that they were going to lose but what they wanted to do was let's go and fight first mm. and that you know explained why they had to sit in deep see if they could suck in the pressure but ivory coast didn't stop they kept piling the pressure and look the, 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 the supporters, you know, played a huge role. It is their nation's cup. Whether you like it or not, it is their nation's cup. So they went into that game of believing that, look, any team that comes in will crush them. So mm -hmm. a Guinea-Bissau, so unfortunate that they were going to be the first, uh, you know, team to play Ivory Coast. It probably was a Nigeria and uh, Ivory Coast. I probably, like, you know, it may have been a different result. Yeah. Maybe that, were, that would be where we'll see that draw being played. Because mm -hmm. the Nigerian team with a lot of experience, knowing that, uh, you know, they're going to play another experienced side, a side that has, a, you know, strong bite, they probably would have raised their game. But, you know, give and take. I'm expecting that Nigeria gets out. Uh, you know, get out of this group? Yeah, 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 they will get out of the group. I mean, because right I mean, now we're we are third, but even though that's on um, on uh, alphabetical order. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, it's Ivory Coast with three points, mm -hmm. Equatorial Guinea with one point, Nigeria with one point, mm -hmm. uh, Guinea Bissau have no point already. Ivory Coast has two goals, four in the goal difference category. So it's the was the was that I, the Ivorian side will do to Nigeria is a draw. Mm. Now, okay. I expect that, you know, uh, Jose Pissero would have learned his lesson. The players, too, uh, would have... You know, in all this mix, I, 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 I don't like talking about Jose Pissero. I expect that the players that would take their destiny in their hands and, of course, mm. know what to do at this point in time. That's probably why you have an um, um, Ahmed Musa in that team now. Mm. You know, to start talking to the players, see what they can do. And, if, again, all them players that should come in... Um, the likes, I heard that the likes of uh, Vincent and Yamaha is in, in Ivory Coast um, mm. and uh, may decide to go to the camp. Like he said, he will always have time to go to the camp and, you know, talk to the players to see what they can do. Mm. So I expect that, look, our biggest match in this competition, the decider whether we'll stay in this competition would be the game against the Ivory Coast. If we lose the game against Ivory Coast, it will be a big disappointment and will not give us the chance of going through from this group. And it will be seriously uh, battering in terms of our image. If, and our FIFA ranking. And FIFA, if Nigeria gets out at this stage. Look at what happened to Ghana. Yes, I expected a Cape Verde to play a good football against Ghana. I didn't expect them to win. Mm -hmm. But it all shows how... Reliance laid, on names. You know, how anymore. laid back or... or how the Ghana national team has been destroyed but I mean, even, a lot. E even Egypt, too, it was not able to... Egypt was not able, but again, what happened? You saw a Mo Salah. Mo Salah was everything that Egyptians needed. You need someone you could build your team around, and that was what the Egyptian team mm. uh, side did. Sadly, so Mo Salah was the man, and he delivered on the night. Sadly, we're out, we're, 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 we're out of time, but I know we will we, we'll still continue 
this discussion because Super Eagles never fail to have either high points or low points. And, and can we not leave system. without also commending the well veteran musician Yemi Alade for She's her not my baby electrifying beautiful Yemi Alade. Electrifying. When you say veteran, make her sound old. My baby is not old. Well, imagine no, being no. a veteran at that age. She, no, don't, use, don't use veteran with my baby. Use the, the beautiful, electrifying delectable. Can I commend? Sexy, can I commend her? Hot, can I please commend her? See, we're competing for who will commend Yemi Alade. Imagine they're shining. competing for who will commend See this smile. shining star. See well, smile. it was a wonderful performance. It's, I mean, it's definitely, definitely was everything for me. So yeah, that, that started off, I've gone on a very good Yemi yeah, is everything. I'm, everything. Just, I'm, see, I'm, I'm saying it's Oprah, I'm hiding my, Yemi yeah, is everything. Yemi yeah, <laughs> yeah, could have gone there and just held the mic and looked around and I'd have been screaming. Honestly. Namdi, are you sure of what you're saying? I'm very sure. Okay, by next year, you see uh, probably the next African Cup of Nations. I'll be the one to open it. I have a strong <laughs> I'm, I'm, wait, I'm waiting to see that. But I think of course, Yemi they gave one of the players a handshake. That could have been the good luck, uh, good luck charm that helped Super Eagles. He was the way this one. No, one goal. they saw they were confused. They didn't want to play a game. Uh, he you was they, they, they were confused. So, uh, Yemi Alade, don't go to the team next time. <laughs> <laughs> she maybe she distracted them a little because that picture a, on her social media. A little. If I was with Bola, I would have been distracted. I didn't even hide it. All right, don't forget you can watch Afcon uh, on Afia. We are showing all matches live today. We'll be showing you Cameroon versus Guinea. Uh, that's coming up this evening. Uh, but before that, there will be Senegal uh, versus Gambia. And before that, before that, there will be Algeria versus Angola. So you don't want to miss all these fixtures coming up on Afia Channel 254, DSTV, 17 Go TV, and of course. Afia TV official or YouTube and Facebook. Thank you very much for being here on Sunday this morning. Thank you so kindly.